To work a squiggly I chord cast on, we have to start by knitting the I chord. So if you've never knit an I chord before, let me show you how to do that. I'm just going to start with a slip knot and then long tail cast on two more stitches so that I've got a total of three stitches. And this is really so simple. I'm just gonna knit these three stitches. Now I'm gonna slip these three stitches from the right needle back to the left needle. And repeat. Knit the three stitches and then slip them. Knit one, two, three. And I like to try to do it all in one motion. Slip them all. And each time you do this motion of knitting and slipping, you knit one more row of I chord. So I've knit one, two, three, four, and then on the needles is my fifth row. So this is five rows of I chord. And I'm gonna go ahead and knit my I chord till I have 33 rows of I chord. Okay, so I finished my 33 rows of I chord and I've gone ahead and cut my yarn end and I'm ready to introduce a new color. And here's where things get squiggly and fun. So I'm going to, one more time, slip my three stitches from right needle to left needle. And then I'm gonna take my new yarn and simply knit these three stitches. Leave myself a nice little tail. Just kind of yank on the tail of the first color. You tighten everything up a bit. Now I've knit across the three stitches in my new yarn and I'm going to turn this around and trade hands. So this is in my left hand now and I'm gonna do a cable cast on. So a cable cast on is just where you insert your right needle in between the first two stitches on the needle. So I'm not going through either of these loops. I'm going directly between these two stitches. And then I'm gonna use my working yarn and knit a stitch through that space between the stitches and put it on the needle. And I'm gonna do that a total of three times. Okay, so I have the initial three stitches that I knit right off the I cord, and I have these three cable cast on stitches. Now, I'm gonna turn the work back around. We'll consider this back to the right side. And next, I'm going to look along the edge of the I chord and I'm gonna count nine rows of I chord. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, I'm going to pick up and knit into that 10th I chord row stitch. So you can kind of look at the natural orientation of your I chord and sort of aim for the column of stitches that is going along the top when you're holding everything straight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna go in through these two legs of this top stitch. Pick up a knit, and I'm gonna pick up and knit the following I chord stitch and the next one as well. So I've picked up three stitches after cable cast donning, <laughs> three stitches. I've got a total of nine stitches now. And I think you're probably starting to get how this is gonna work, but now we're gonna turn the work back to the wrong side. 
and cable cast on three more stitches. One, two, three. Turn the work back to the right side. Count nine rows of I cord from starting after your last picked up stitch. So I picked up right here. So I'm gonna count after that as one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm gonna pick up into the 10th stitch from there. And try not to twist your I cord around as you are, are counting and picking up. Like, right, you don't want it spiraled up like this. Or maybe you do, but I think the, the best default is that the I cord is not twisted. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's the tenth stitch. And I'm gonna pick up a knit one, pick up a knit two, pick up a knit three. Now I've got two squiggles. Turn the work back to the wrong side. Cable cast on. One two, three, and whether or not you've been counting perfectly along your I-cord doesn't really matter so much because at this point, let's just not even count. We're gonna go to the end of the I-cord and we're going to pick up into the first three stitches that we cast on. We're gonna pick up into the three stitches at the very end of the I-cord. One, two, this doesn't really have to be so perfect. It's always a little bit awkward to pick up into the end of something like this. And here we go. Now, that's my cast on. All of my blue stitches are ready to be knit outward. And I'm gonna knit a swatch and come back to you once it's done so that we can do the squiggly I cord bind off next. All right, so at the end of our I cord squiggly cast on, we ended up with 21 stitches. And then I went ahead and knit, I think I also knit about 21 rows. And I just did a little garter border and I did one row of pearl bumps to start and to finish just to keep the swatch from curling. And now we're ready to do our squiggly I cord bind off. And we do a little pre bind off on the body of the swatch to prepare for the I cord. So it's similar to what we did here, but almost like the inverse. So what I'm going to do is knit the first three stitches. Then I want to bind off the following three stitches, these three. So I've got to start by knitting two and then bind off, bind off, bind off, And now I want to have another group of three knit stitches. So I, we actually already have the first one on the needle because we had to knit one stitch extra to bind off that third stitch, if that makes sense. Anyway, you just need to have groups of three. So knit two more. You see we have three at the start, three bind off, three more. Now we're going to bind off the next three stitches. So have to start by knitting two additional and then bind off, bind off, bind off, get another group of three knit stitches, bind off three, the last 
last three. And now we are prepared. We have something like this. Groups of three live stitches and three bound off stitches. And we are ready for the I cord. So I'm just going to snip my blue yarn. Let's get a new color. I'm gonna take this pretty green. I'm gonna slide these stitches to the other end of the needle. And we're just gonna go ahead and knit our first three stitches. in the new color. And we're gonna start knitting an I cord. So slip three stitches from right needle to left needle, knit three. And you're gonna do this until you have nine rows of I cord knit up. Okay, so I've got nine rows of my green I cord and I'm ready to have my next attached part to create the squiggle. So if you've ever done an I cord bind off, then this is gonna be familiar to you, like a normal I cord bind off without squiggles. I'm going to slip these three stitches back to the left needle. I'm gonna knit the first two and then when I get to the last stitch, I'm going to put it with my first blue live stitch on the left needle. And I'm going to knit two together through back loop. So insert my right needle through both of those stitches behind them like this. Knit through both. And we've attached. Now slip three stitches back to left needle, knit one, knit two, knit two together through back loop. Slip, 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 knit one, knit two, knit two together through back loop. And now I've just eaten up my first group of three blue live stitches and I'm ready to do another nine rows of free I cord before I get ready to do my next attached section. So now we just go back to slip, 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 knit, knit, knit without the knit two together. And I'm gonna go till I've got nine rows coming off. I think you get it by now, but I'll go ahead and show it again. I finished my next section of nine free rows of I cord, and I will go ahead and slip those three stitches from right needle to left needle, knit, knit, and once again, knit two together through back loop with one of my blue stitches. And I'm gonna do that until I've exhausted the group of three leftover blue stitches. And I've got one more group of three left, so I'll do another nine rows of I cord and I'll meet you at the end of the row. But now we've got two squiggles. Okay, so I knit my nine rows of I cord. I've got my two squiggles attached and I could finish this swatch the same way we did the other attached parts of just doing the knit two togethers to resolve each of these three blue stitches. But then you're kind of left with an I cord that would just be coming off the edge facing this way with like where the bind off would be. 
And I don't think that's the nicest way to finish this. You see how at the beginning of the swatch, it kind of seamlessly comes right out of the end because we just started by knitting these already live stitches. We can achieve that effect at the end as well by doing a Kitchener stitch and grafting these stitches. If you hate Kitchener, you could do a three needle bind off or you could just finish the same way we've done these others by doing a knit together through back loop for the three of these and then finish with a knit three together through back loop and cut your yarn and everything's good and resolved. But I'm gonna trim my green yarn, leaving a tail that I can work with. And we want our, our uh, Kitchener stitches to get grafted like this, right? That would be the natural flow of things. So let's get our needles like this. And I'm not even gonna lie to you. I always Google Kitchener stitch. I don't do it that often. I think if I knit more socks, well, no, I started doing my socks toe up, so I don't even do Kitchener on socks. So I just don't do Kitchener all the time. And I end up looking it up every time just to be sure. So I've just looked it up and this is not meant to be a Kitchener tutorial. So if you want to see a really like slow in-depth Kitchener tutorial, tutorial, uh, look elsewhere. But I think I remember the instructions I read three seconds ago. So I went ahead and thread a needle, a darning needle with my yarn tail. I'm going to enter the first stitch on the front needle purlwise and then thread the first stitch on the back needle knitwise. Now I'm going to insert my needle through the first stitch on the front needle knitwise, take it off, and then insert through the next stitch purlwise, leave it on. Back needle, purl off, knit on, knit off, purl on, purl off, knit on, knit off, purl off. Hope you could follow that. <laughs> also, Hope I did it right and it looks okay. It's like a little bit loosey-goosey, but that's the gist of it. Pretty decently well-crafted. So there you have it. That is, so the bind off that I just did is the technique that's actually used in my antiphonal shawl pattern. We only do the squiggly eye cord as a bind off in that design. But I just wanted to show that it can be done as a cast on or a bind off. And now I'm gonna show you, I think I'm gonna show you, it's like one other method, but I'm gonna do it two ways. I'm gonna do kind of an afterthought squiggly eye cord. Um, I would say this would be easiest on like a cast on or a bind off edge. It would be really intuitive, but I don't wanna knit another swatch. And I think you'll get the idea of this. Um, if I use a side edge, it really doesn't matter that much. So I'm going to do like an afterthought. Let's say you already knit a piece of fabric and then you decide you want to add this to whatever side of that fabric. You could like go through the motions. You could pick up stitches along that whole edge and then do kind of like the bind off version. You could knit a couple, bind off a couple, knit a couple, bind off a couple, and then do your eye cord bind off that way. Um, that might seem easier to some folks, but I think it's totally fine. If we just do, rather than a pick up and knit, we're going to do a true pick up, which is not something I do all the time in knitting. I, I should do more of it. I feel like you could do so many cool things with, um, picking up into stitches this way. We don't have that much room on this edge, so I just want a squiggle that starts here, comes out touches in the middle, comes out and ends here. So what I'm gonna do is just insert my needle through three stitches along the edge here. 
So I've got one, two, three. Now, let's see, how many garter bumps do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So one, two, three, four, five would be the midpoint, right? That makes sense. No, this would be my middle point. So I'm gonna go just kind of eyeballing right in the middle of the swatch and I'm gonna pick up three more. And as far as the technique of how I'm doing this, I just mostly am using my eyes and seeing like, I can try both ways, picking up from behind or picking up from the front. And then I can tell which way looks correct in this case, with the, the stitches I'm going into, it's working better to go from behind um, to get, you want your stitches to go onto the needle in the orientation as if you needed to knit them, right? If you were inserting uh, a needle here to knit, um, it would go through naturally and smoothly this way. Whereas if I go this way, it would be twisted. So I am going to, go into three stitches. Oops, did I lose a stitch? I believe I did. I'll go into these three here. I'm really not being scientific about this. And I'll go into the last three here. And some of the stitches I've gone through are kind of acting like yarn overs. And I really don't think that matters. I'm honestly kind of experimenting with you here a little bit. Let's introduce a third color. Fourth color, rather. But I don't really think I even need to show you what comes next. It's gonna be the same as the I cord bind off that we did. See, I am just listening to these stitches. I tried to insert my needle as I normally would and I could feel it was twisted. So I'm gonna go through the back loop here. These are the kinds of things that it's good to just get a feel for and learn to trust your intuition. I believe in you. And now I'll do my nine rows of I cord. Okay, here's my yellow I cord, which I didn't feel the need for us to go through that on video. Again, it's the exact same technique as the I cord bind off that I did with the green I cord. The only difference was how I got started by picking up the stitches that I needed for the attached portions rather than having already a full edge of live stitches and, and selectively binding off and leaving groups. Um, but rather just picking up. Um, I just took my thumbnail photo for the video and all of my ends are still attached and hidden in the back, a little behind the scenes um, catfishing. I'm not weaving in those ends. It would be really cute if I did a fourth color on the edge, but there's no need. However, what I do think I wanna show, same technique as this, but just to expand our minds in even other interesting directions and dimensions, I just, to prove a point, I wanna do it like dead in the middle of the fabric of the swatch. Um, let me think about it. Okay, I've just thought about how I wanna do this. Um, this is the orientation of the swatch. This is the top, this is the bottom. And let's say I want a squiggle I cord um, 
that ultimately, like if this were a garment or something that would sit in the same orientation, I'd probably want the eye cord to drape this way downwards on the fabric. And I think my intuition tells me that the best way to do this, that the eye cord sits in a pretty way, is actually gonna be to flip your swatch upside down and work this way. Maybe it wouldn't make a difference. I don't think I'm gonna be experimenting with both ways in this video. I'm just gonna follow my gut and we're gonna see what happens. So we're gonna pick up, I'm gonna choose this row here. And this is not a technique I use all the time, so I do have to think about which leg of the stitch is gonna be the right one to go into from this orientation. I think I wanna go through the left leg. So this is not crucial. You wanna go through one leg of each stitch that you need to pick up all the way down and you wanna be consistent. Um, you might find once you actually start to knit that the stitches are in a twisted orientation and that's okay. You can untwist them as you go. So I'm, I'm going through the left leg. So I've got the three border stitches. Now I'm gonna skip three, skip one, two, three, enter one, two, three. Here's the, the tricky thing with this is you wanna, I mean, if you want this to go straight across your swatch, then you wanna make sure you're picking up into only one row of knitting. Um, it's not that hard to do, but I'm just trying to be quick on the video, so I'm not really taking my time. But if you really take your time, you can make sure that you're doing that. One way that I can tell uh, my next row is if I pull, I can see the leg of the adjacent stitch that's also pulling. One, two, three. Those are the skipped ones. Two, three. Skip one, two, three. And then here it's easy to... Okay, sorry about that. I literally just ran out of storage space while picking up my stitches, but I was almost at the end of the row. So I just picked up my last three which was easy to determine the correct row with these garter bumps to follow. So I'm all picked up. I've got three, skip three, three, skip three, three, skip three, three. And I will go ahead and slide to the other needle. I just went and grabbed another new color we can add in and this is going to be the exact same process as the previous two just in a funky and experimental location so I'm just going to fold my swatch in half to make this comfortable to knit and I can immediately tell that I have picked this up in a way where it just feels uh, more natural to go through the back loop that's a thing you can learn from looking and feeling. And I don't know if that's going to be consistent with all of the ones that I picked up, but so far it is. That actually works out because these are all going to get resolved with knit two togethers through the back loop, so I think it'll go smoothly. Okay, so I knit my first three and it's right back to doing this free I chord. And again, I'll do nine rows of I chord. got nine rows of I cord done. Slip these three stitches back to the left needle. 
and I'll knit one, knit two, and knit two together with one of my picked up stitches through the back loop. Okay, and uh, that's the start. I'm gonna keep going. Um, I think I'll just finish this and show you how it, it turned out at the end, but it's gonna be the same process we've done for the previous two. Um, and I will finish with a Kitchener here as well. Okay, so here's the final result of my little experiment here with using this technique on the surface of the fabric. And uh, I would say my intuition to do this upside down was right. Um, this was my cast on side, this was my bind off side, but I picked up stitches and worked this all like this and flipped it back. I mean, you could kind of, since it's only anchored at these points, you could this could stick up, you know, or it could go up or it could go down. But when it goes down, and we would assume that we would block it that way or that it would just naturally fall that way on a garment with gravity, um, especially in a drapier yarn, uh, it does look best that way. Whereas if I flip it up, um, you can kind of see awkward picked up stitches and the Kitchener also. So yeah. That was a fun little experiment and I condensed this as much as possible in my mind at least for this video. There's a lot more that could be said as to how you plan this to achieve certain things but I'm hoping if you follow along and grasp this technique just in the basic way I've laid it out to create this swatch for this video. I think you could probably bridge some of the gaps in the knowledge that I didn't really feel like I had the time to include, but just really things about like, um, for example, I started each of these I chords like where, where the beginning of the I chord lines up directly with the edge, but I could have done this in a way where I had a tail of an I chord over here that was floating and didn't get attached till here. And maybe I'd want to do that. You know, I might want to do this in a way where um, I could do an I chord around all four edges that appears to be continuous. You know, I could have made it so that um, I had like a provisional cast on, knit a few rows, attached it, did a squiggle, left it free here, and then, you know, just join in with the new yarn. Um, but I think this is a good place to start and it was really fun to put this together, especially, I, I really didn't plan, like I didn't try this before the video. So we were trying it for the first time together and gosh, there's really, you could do a lot of creative stuff with like a free flowing I cord placed exactly as you want it on the surface of knit fabric, really cool stuff. So I hope you enjoy whether you try out the shawl pattern or not. I hope that you gain something from this technique and feel free to add these little edgings to other patterns that you follow or if you like designing your own stuff please feel free to incorporate this it's really cool and it's really fun happy knitting